Welcome back. Today we are going to paint a bunny with acrylic paints. For this project, you will need a canvas, mine is 11 by 14 inches, an art gum eraser, and a brown or red Prismacolor pencil. You will also need a set of acrylic paints, paint brushes, especially a square and a fine tip brush. Also, you will need a cup of water, a disposable plate, and paper towels. Let's get started. To begin, draw a diagonal line for the front of the face and attach a curved line at the bottom. Next, draw a half circle connecting the two lines together. This will be the bunny's head. Now draw a giant marshmallow shape for the bunny's midsection. Draw an upside down triangle and flatten the bottom with a horizontal line. Then add a half circle for the foot. Next, draw two rectangles, with one smaller than the other, and again add a half circle. One foot is set back and slightly raised. Next, add his ears. The first is shaped like a feather, and the other turned slightly, resembling a banana shape. Draw a diagonal line for the back of the neck and a sideways half circle for the leg. Next, add the back foot, turning it out a little. On the left side of the bunny, draw a long line for the bunny's back and right leg, then add another foot. Just up from his chin, add an upside down triangle for the nose and add a straight line that attaches the nose to the chin. Next, draw a curvy line on the right and on the left for his big cheeks. Then, square up the face a little by adding a straight line on the left side. Add a tiny chin and round his face a little more on the bottom right. Be sure to erase the old line. To align the eyes the right way, draw a curvy T shape. Then on the horizontal line to the right, draw a fan shape for the eye. Be sure to round the eyeball within that shape. Now draw the inner outline of his ear, then add lines for all of his toes. To shade, follow along and watch closely as I work over the entire body. Shading will make it easier for you to determine where all of the lights and darks are. Don't forget to add the pupil of the eye. Make a C shape with your pencil, then shade around it.
Don't forget the dark shadows beneath the bunny's body. Also, add some grass blades and a few lines in the back to guide you through the painting process. Okay, now that we have the bunny drawn and shaded, we are going to begin the background. As you can see, I have set up all of my paints, my paint brushes, my water, my paper towel, I have my palette knife, and I put all of my paints in order on my plate, beginning with my gloss medium gel, my titanium white, my cadmium yellow, my phthalo yellow green, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, ivory black, this is raw umber, and then we have burnt sienna. So um, we want to mix several different shades of green. And to do that, let me show you. We're going to start out with the phthalo yellow green. We're going to mix that with cadmium yellow. And this will give us a light, warm green, because we're adding the yellow to it. And then I don't like to waste my paint, so what I do is I take, I take the paint that's already on the palette knife and I swipe it, and then I add another color to it, and I just continue to do that. Um, right here we're going to take burnt sienna, we're going to mix it into this swatch right here, because we are going to need some browns in our grass, but this one needs just a little more green, so, so we'll just add more of the phthalo yellow green. As you can see, we're getting a nice brownish green, almost a mossy green. Okay, and then we need to darken and get some darker greens. So let's take the cerulean blue and the phthalo yellow green, mix those together. And I kept that mossy green on my palette knife. I feel like the more colors you can get in each swatch, the better. And so just leave those colors on there. Okay, now let's do another variety of color. So we need some shadows, some deep shadows. So I'm gonna get a little messy right here. Ultramarine blue, uh, raw umber would be good. And then we also want to mix the phthalo yellow green to get another dark shadow. And if it's a little bit light and you don't feel like it's dark enough, just add burnt sienna, raw umber. Just to darken a little. And as you can see, we have four different shades. Um, I wanna do a couple more. So let's take ivory black, cerulean blue, 
ultramarine blue. Mix those together. You do want some blues in your grass. It just looks more natural. Okay, and that's a really nice shadow. And then I want plain burnt umber, or sorry, raw umber and ivory black. And we'll mix those two together for a really dark shadow right underneath the rabbit's feet. And I feel like we might need um, a good bright yellow. So I'm gonna mix burnt sienna with my cadmium yellow. And this will give us a brownish yellow color. That's also nice to have in your shadows. And then let's do one more swatch of that, but lighten it up a little bit more. So just wipe it over here, add more yellow, add a little bit of white. Sorry, my plate's a little bit shaky. And again, I like to use disposable plates because when you get done, you can just toss it in the garbage and you don't have to worry about a lot of cleanup. So that's why I'm going this route. Okay, so this is a good variety of colors here and this will get us started. If in the process you feel like, hey, I need to add another color, um, feel free to mix more colors. Um, you might see me doing that. Um, if I do, if I decide to add more colors, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Let's get started. To paint the background, you are going to paint as though you are scattering sunshine. Use all of the colors we mixed in different areas to add contrast between the lights and the darks. Be sure to mix a lot of gel medium or retarder in your paints when painting. This will slow the drying process and make your paint more slippery. Notice all of the different sections of color I'm painting. Gently blend those sections into each other.
Be careful not to overblend. This can lead to the background looking as though you only used one color instead of multiple colors. Paint the lightest shade of green over your drawn grass blades. You will be painting the long grass dark to contrast against the light. Paint over the base of the long grass blades with a much darker shade of green. Add brown to the dark green in the foreground as well. Then paint the bottom right corner light green for the scattered sunshine look. Take your fine tipped brush and begin painting your long blades of grass. If this feels too tedious, take a small flat square brush, turn it on its side and stroke upward to also create fine lines. Notice the many shades of both green and brown that I used to paint the long grass. This gives your painting a more realistic look. Watch carefully as I continue painting the grass and follow along.
And now we have a beautiful background. Okay, now that we are done with the background, it's time to paint the bunny. And this bunny is going to be light brown, and so we are going to mix some colors that will look really good for light brown fur. Um, I have my paints in order once again, and this is the gel medium. This is ivory black, raw umber, burnt sienna. This one, I'm remembering, raw sienna. This is yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, Grumbacher red, titanium white, and cerulean blue. And just watch as I mix these colors, you can get a lot of colors, a lot of different shades from these paints. So starting with white, and notice how I got a lot of white. It's because we will be using a lot to blend into our colors. So just make sure you have quite a bit. Okay, so I just took the raw sienna and I'm mixing it with white. And look at that beautiful color that we get. Again, it's a light brown bunny, and so we want to have a variation of light brown colors. Okay, so I'm going to swipe that right here, and let's mix a little bit of yellow into that to get a golden color. Okay, you can see that that looks really, really pretty. Um, we also need to get a darker tone, and so leave that paint on your palette, I mean on your, palette knife and then take burnt sienna mix that together you'll need a little more raw umber and then I would even tone this down The darker shades and just add a little bit to that. You can even add a little ivory black. And that's a nice color to use for your shadows. And then let's make another shade of this that's a little bit lighter. So just swipe your palette knife, take some white and blend. And notice how you get really, really light almost smoky color right there. And I'm going to add just a, a little more ivory black to that. Some gray would be really nice in the fur. And then take that shade, swipe it right here, add some cerulean blue. I know you're thinking, why blue? But as you get more familiar with art, you're going to see so many more colors in every object that you look at. And it's the weird colors that actually make things look more realistic. I know that sounds funny, but it's true. Um, just be more observant when you are out and about looking at different objects in nature. Okay, so we have five good shades here. I think we need to get a little bit of an orange tone, so let's take the yellow and let's take a little bit of the raw sienna and also yellow ochre. And what makes orange is yellow and red together. So we'll put some red in there. And there you have a rich rusty orange color and then I want to do a lighter shade of that so once again my little trick swipe that color right here take some white and blend that and get a light shade and then I might darken it just a little bit so just take a little more of that paint and add that to it Okay, and then we need pink. Inside the ear is pink, and so what makes pink is red and white. But we don't want it to be a wild pink, and so we've gotta to tone it down a little. That's too bright. It won't look like a real bunny if we go that bright. So 
One way to tone it down is to add yellow. You can see how that made it a little more neutral and then add some white. There's a little bit of blue in that, which actually will help. So add a little blue to yours if you didn't have it on your palette knife already. You see that's, that's a good pink shade right there. Okay, and then I want a dark gray. So I'm gonna take some raw sienna and I need to find room on here. Um, ivory black and a small hint of white. Not very much. And then blend those together. Okay. And I like this shade, but I think we need a darker one too. So I'll come over here, swipe that, add a little more raw sienna. And there we go. That's darker. Okay, so if you look at your, your palette here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors, and you can still keep going. The more colors you add, the more realistic it looks. Let's go ahead and get started with this, and if we see that we need any more colors, we can add more. Here we go. To paint the bunny, add multiple colors to each area, softly blending into each other. Notice that the outer edge is done with white or light gray. Stroke along those edges to soften the bunny's fur. Use the dark browns and grays for the shadows, keeping the edges light. Use the light blue we mixed for added highlights in the bunny's fur. Notice the gradual change from light to dark in the shadow on the ear. Be sure to gradiate with your colors, enhancing the colors within the shadows.
Watch as I paint the entire body. Pay close attention to which colors I use in each area. To paint a realistic eye, begin by painting the entire eye black. Take some medium blue on the tip of your brush and work that into the black. I painted a C using that blue. Next, add a white dot at the top. Take some sienna brown and paint a bold curved line at the bottom of the eye, leaving a black line beneath it. Blend a little and then soften the outer outline of the eye with gray. Then add a tiny line at the top right for small lashes. Watch as I work over my bunny, adding additional shadows and highlights. Also add small fur strokes on all the outer edges. I'm also going to add the other eye. You will only see a small portion of it. With black, paint a bold vertical line on the left side of the bunny's face. Then take white and gray and add lashes. For the whiskers, use a lot of gel medium with your white and definitely use a super fine tip brush. Watch carefully as I paint the individual hairs. Upon completing your bunny, mix more green, both light and dark shades to add additional blades around your bunny to better blend him into the background. And now you are done. Enjoy your spring project and continue practicing the techniques you learned today. He looks pretty good against my spring flowers in my yard. If you liked this project, be sure to like and comment below and subscribe today for more incredible art projects to come. See you next time.